Hello and welcome to the movement for a female-led society. I am Tierica Patterson, the founder of our new female-led society, and I am sharing all of my wisdom, all of my insights, so that you will be able to understand exactly how we can create world peace through the establishment of a female-led society. The empowerment of women is the only way that we will experience peace on earth. We need to protect, promote, and please the women in our lives so that they can go out and become the leaders that they were destined to be. It's time to stop holding women back. It's time to stop putting up blocks in place. It's time to release the brilliance of women And we need to have men standing next to us, standing with us, standing behind us, allowing us to stand on their shoulders, working together so that the brilliance of humanity will be recognized and realized and useful to our social progress. So we have a lot of work to do. We're setting the foundation for our female-led society right now. I am initiating the transition. And if you want to join me, make sure you visit femaleledsociety.org and subscribe. Take active, make an active stand that you would like to experience peace on earth in your lifetime. And you want your children to experience peace on earth. And we can do that together. Let's stand together. So today, I got an interesting email from a subscriber to femaleledsociety.org. And if you join that subscriber list, you can also send me a question that you would like to see addressed on this podcast. He wrote, this is about the Me Too movement, by the way. He had a very strong reaction to what I wrote about it in a manifesto for a female-led society, which is my ideas, expressed ideas. My blueprint for what I would do if I was creating a female-led society, which I am. So it's my plan. If you want to know what I'm planning to do, if you want to know where I'm going, check out a manifesto for a female-led society. Of course, it's available on Amazon. And you can also find the online study guide for it available on flrstyle.com. So he wrote, I think that all people, women and men, should always be respected to each other at all times, even when they don't deserve it, because that is how I was brought up. When any person does wrong, it should be pointed out to them. They should consider asking for forgiveness and coach to change and improve themselves and their life failings. In this regard, I understand how women are emotionally angered and some are supporting the Me Too movement from the accusations of men's improprieties. Men should not do those things. However, I also believe that it takes two to tango, so to speak. May I please ask why women don't take responsibility for this movement also? Because when some women start out with their careers to try to make it big, acting, TV, modeling, corporate, or other high-paying careers, that they accept powerful men's advances, men in power and positions at that time, Why don't women refuse their advances of helping them to advance their careers quickly with high paying positions and become big stars with the help of these powerful men's influences? Doesn't that seem very hypocritical? People can't have it both ways. And that is what these women subjected themselves to with these powerful men. The successful women accepted the men's advances to help these women get fame and fortune, then refuse it. Why didn't these men say no when these powerful men made advances to them in the beginning of these women's big time careers. I think it was all done privately and secretly, but the women just could not say no to these powerful men. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these women bring it all out, mostly when they are older and their careers are waning or ended, and publicly accuse these powerful men of their advances who actually helped these women's successful careers in the beginning. I worked for major corporations and I saw how it worked, but I did not participate or make advances to women to help their careers. I believe in giving the job to the most qualified person for any job without any political support or any advances from powerful people of position. Isn't it too bad that most of us have to struggle to make an honest living? Why do women use their feminine wives to shortcut their careers to fame and fortune by accepting advances of the powerful men who can advance their careers for them? 
Then, after these women are successful, these same women complain later on, humiliate and shame these powerful men, and bring out public accusations to try to bring down these men who made advances on these women in the beginning to help their big careers. As the saying goes, there are no free lunches. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. There are always two sides to the story, just like when children argue with each other. Due to all of this, I think that both men and women are equally at fault with the Me Too movement. Don't we need women and men to learn from these mistakes and we all improve our lives, careers, and respect for each other? That's what he said. This is what he wrote to me. Now, this is an interesting topic because the Me Too movement, for me, became the tipping point for the establishment of our female-led society. I truly believe that once this movement kicked off, it shifted the power dynamic in corporations all across our country and then it began to infiltrate other countries as well not every country but a lot of countries and women's voices began to start being heard and it was no more of don't believe her or the women were always afraid to say something because nothing would be done remember Anita Hill who spoke out about sexual harassment Nobody believed her. She became ostracized. Remember um, the young lady, um, Monica Lewinsky, who had the affair with with Bill Clinton. He still went on to enjoy a successful and respected career. And she was tarnished forever because of that tryst. So he's basically saying that women have a part in gaining advantage, advantages in their careers for men. Well, that's true. Smart women have that advantage. Some women have that advantage and know how to use it. Some women said, hey, all I have to do is is mess around with you and I get this advantage. Okay, I'll do that. Not every woman who was a part of the Me Too movement had that um, intelligence to do that. Because I think that's that's an intelligent woman. You know, if that's the choice you want to make and you're not going to regret it, why not do that? But there are some women who did not have that intelligence or that desire to do it. They were trying to work their way up by themselves and they had men proposition them and threaten them that if you don't do this, then you will not move forward. That is what the Me Too movement is about. It's about being powerless in the workplace, powerless in in situations where you're just trying to do the best you can. And someone is coming to you with an ultimatum. You have to. Allow me to touch your body or you're not going to get where you're going to go and want to go in life. That is what the Me Too movement is about. Yes, there are women who slept with men to to get the raise, to get the promotion. Yes, it was all a game of social climbing and social status and people um, engaging with each other for favors. Yes, if they did that willingly, that's fine. I don't see a problem with people playing those games if it's an agreement and you want it. But if you don't want something like that to happen, if you're sitting at your desk and your boss is rubbing on your breast and telling you, if you don't allow me to continue, you're going to have to find another job. He's threatening your livelihood. That is a problem. So this um, writer goes on to say, you know, um, these women are using their feminine wiles. Okay. Great. If you can use a man in any kind of way and, it's, and you're OK with it and he's OK with it, I don't see a problem with that. But he's saying that later on, these same women who willingly went and did these things and made deals with these men and willingly slept with these men to get where they needed to go. These are the women that are coming back and accusing these men of abusing them and are pretending to be victims. This is what this man is saying that these women who are part of the Me Too movement are pretending to be victims when they willingly participated in this game of sexual play for progress in their careers. There are some women who did that. There may be some women who, who, who are doing exactly what he said, but there are men out there who took advantage of their authority over women to shame them, to get them to do things that they did not want to do, Because these women wanted to protect their families, they wanted to protect their reputation, they wanted to protect their careers, and they could not say anything because no one would hold the men accountable. That's what the Me Too movement is about. It's about holding men accountable 
for the wrongdoing that they've done in the past that they were never accountable for. Because no one would believe you. No one would take your side. This man is a powerful man in the, in the office. He can have anyone fired he, want, he wants to. Why would you say anything? And even if you do decide to say anything, who's going to do something about it? This is an abuse of power. This is what the Me Too movement is about. It's about the um, abuse of power by men in authoritative positions. And a woman's voice was not even considered back then. So, yes, these are maybe older women coming out after 20, 30 years. And they can finally say something. And I applaud them for saying something even now. Because they could have chosen to just be quiet and continue to allow it to happen. But they didn't. They spoke up. Even though they know. No woman in their right mind wants to stand there and say, accuse someone of doing something to them from years back. That You get no glory from that. All people do is look at you and say, what were you wearing? What did you do? Just point the finger back at you. When you're finally getting the guts to say, this person has been hurting me. This person hurt me. And all they say is, what did you do? What were you wearing? So the Me Too movement isn't what you think it is. Maybe you have some emotions around it because you said you were in corporate America and you saw women gladly giving away sexual favors in exchange for their progress. But what you didn't see was the older ladies being raped in their offices after hours while they were cleaning. What you didn't see were women being fired because they refused to sleep with their bosses. What you didn't what you didn't see were the children at home who didn't have lights because their mother refused to sleep with someone at the office. And she got fired. You're not seeing the pain of women going to the police and saying this person raped me. This person touched me. You want women to take responsibility and we will take responsibility. When we establish our new female led society, there will be no need for something like the Me Too movement. Because women will be responsible for their interactions with men. Men are obliged to always seek consent before touching a woman or mentioning any sexually explicit things. And women are responsible now for what happens between them and a the man. There will be no more victimhood. Because whatever happens is because she wants it. She initiates it. She says it's okay. Of course, we'll still have to deal with the men who are s- slow in the transition of respecting women. And hit a few hands, lock a few up punch a few in the head, you know, we might have to do that. But slowly but surely, these men are going to come to understand that it is a woman's place to let them know when it's time for them to be touched, when it's time for them to, to enter a woman's home in a sexual way. A woman will speak up and say, this is what I want. So women will have to learn how to do that too. It's a transition for everybody. But this is definitely not the time for you, a man, to say, hey, this is a trick. Women are playing victims when they've been a part of it the whole time. Yes, some women may have. But what about those who weren't a part of it, who didn't want anything to do with it? And who had no one to turn to because no one would believe them? And no one could do anything about it. Imagine what it's like to know that someone is hurting you and nobody cares. Imagine how defeated you feel in this world. Imagine what that does to your confidence, to your ability to produce greatness into this world. You think nobody cares about you. Imagine the scores of women who've who've grown up and had to become women under this kind of patriarchal BS. We do need the Me Too movement and we need it to be stronger. We need to set some examples. We need to give women the opportunity to speak up and say, yes, Me Too. We need every woman to say their Me Too story. 
We need these men to understand that you will be found out. You will be told there will be repercussions and there need to be repercussions. Because it's a sad, sad day when a man is a bully to someone that they know can't fight back. What a sad bully. What a disgusting bully. You know this person can't fight back and you're continuously beating them and beating them and beating them and hurting them. What a sadist. What a disgusting sadist. And you need to be dealt with properly. The Me Too movement is important. It finally gave us a voice. It finally allowed us to say, this is wrong. And use, and typically, did you notice that when one woman said, this is wrong, this person hurt me, it was scores of other women who said the same thing about that same person. So what happened was these men would hurt one woman and f- realize, oh, I can get away with it. And then they would make it a career. 50 women were raped by Bill Cosby. Fifty women were raped by Bill Cosby alone. And no one could do anything about it. And now these women are saying, yes, me too. It happened to me. And when they thought they were the only one, when they thought they were singled out for abuse, and it's the horrible thing to think that you're singled out for abuse. Because you think, what's wrong with me? Why did they choose to be so awful to me? When everyone else is out there being happy, no one's being awful to her. Why would they do it to me? And then you realize it wasn't just you. This was an awful person, period. That abused their power. And they knew that they would never be accountable for it. Because who's going to believe a woman? So, okay, I hear you. There may have been some women that slipped in there and, and, you know, did a little something strange for some change. But if they did that and they're accounted among these other women who are speaking out in sincerity, so be it. Let a woman have her time to say how she feels. Regardless of your judgment of it. Support women by listening, by believing them, and by taking action if you can. It's a lonely world out here for the damaged woman, for the damaged man as well. So for the damaged person, it's a lonely world because you don't know how to heal. And especially if no one will believe you about how you became damaged. Instead of judging these women who are calling themselves victims and saying that someone hurt them. Give them their time to have their say, because for the most part. People who feel like they're victims, they just want the the hurtful action to be acknowledged. Please say you did this to me because I'm not making it up. Don't call me a liar. Don't make it seem like I'm crazy and I'm thinking weird. I'm just making stuff up in my head. Don't smile at me when you hurt me yesterday. I didn't make this up. My pain is real. My pain is valid. And what you're saying to them is, you know you wanted it. You know you was a part of it. Not all of them were a part of it. I know maybe you've seen women in your corporate environments that was down and willing and played the game and got where they needed to go. Yes, those were smart women. I would call them smart. But there are other women who did not want to play that game, did not want to use their intelligence for that particular avenue to get where they wanted to go they didn't want to do that they wanted to use their smarts in a different way and then these advances these sexual advances and harassment were forced upon them and they couldn't do nothing about it and I'm here to personally say me too 
I've been in a situation where an authority figure has uh, hurt me in a sexual way. I went to the police and they did nothing. I went to my family and they did nothing. I've talked about it on social media. I've told men who came in and out of my life and no one has done nothing. And I still have to pretend that it didn't happen. And going on about my life, knowing that I wasn't important enough for anybody on this earth, for them to go to this person and say, why did you do that? Stop doing that. That was wrong. So I had to create my own sense of self-importance when it was damaged at a very young age. And I still keep going and I'm still amazing and I still achieve every dream that I've ever had and I'm still awesome. But there is a part of me that still hurts a little bit. Knowing that feeling that I'm alone in this world. Because nobody believes me. Nobody did anything about it. The Me Too movement? Yeah, we need it. The Me Too movement? Yes, it's real. The Me Too movement? Yes, it may be a little bit frayed around the edges. But it's necessary. And if it wasn't for that Me Too movement, we would not be initiating our movement for a female-led society. Support us. Instead of judging women, support us. Agree with us. Stand with us. Don't look at at us as though we're liars. Look at us as though we're finally allowed to speak. And whatever it is we have to say, just listen. Just listen. I don't know why you're hurting or what you're feeling where you feel anger towards women. But every woman is not what you have in your mind. We just want to be heard. We just want to say, me too. Without you pointing the finger back at us and telling us you're not being sincere. You were a part of it. Me too. You're listening to the movement for a female-led society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of a female-led society. Make sure you visit femaleledsociety.org to join our email list and keep in touch with all of the progress that we're having. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.